Hello, I'm Benson and welcome to my video. Today I'm going to show you my method of making white tiles engraving with my laser packer 4. Now there's many ways to do it. Some people brush it, some people paint it. I'm just going to show you what I'm doing so far. And I'm also experimenting some other few uh, new techniques. So hopefully I will make a video for that in the future. If you don't know what a laser packer 4 is, basically it's a laser engraver. And it's a world first laser with two types of laser in one head. So this is not painted on, this is actually engraved. So the laser turned the titanium dioxide metal powder into engraving. The method that I use here is a spray on um, powder and ethanol alcohol. So it's different from um, your, your can spray. So what we have here is a very, very rough surface where the titanium dioxide actually fuse with the surface of the tile. So this is using the bin function on the laser packer design space software. So basically it's a continual beam of laser with no change in power, just left, right, left, right. So it's either on or off. So you can see no shading there. This part is where I use the um, dot matrix kind of a print. So the laser kind of fire individual dot. The closer the dot, the darker the shading. So there's two type of uh, function available on that. And the setting I use here is a bin function and is a uh, 1K resolution, 90 power, 10 speed, and only one pass. So it's already kind of better than my uh, previous laser. As you can see, that is a, a lot more detailed. So those are just sample pictures I found online. If you want to, you can always use your own photos as well. So this is part of our family holiday in America. And to do this, you do have to do your own um, sample test. It took me a while to get to this stage to have a comfortable setting. Uh, the comfortable setting I'm using at the moment is 450 nanometer laser, um, 1K resolution, 60 power and 100% depth. You just keep doing it until you get the result that you want. The thicker the spray, the more power that you need. So when you spray the um, so when you spray the mixture, it's very important to do that consistently as well. So this is one of the reasons why I'm saying this is not the perfect method yet. So the perfect method should be something that repeat repeatable with good results. So I'm still waiting for that. But anyway, this is a good start. In terms of the Laser Packer 4, you've got two um, wavelengths of laser. you got a 450 nanometer and then a 1064 nanometers almost like infrared. And this is the typical result that you get from the different laser. So the 1064 nanometer laser gives you a really, really smooth surface, but not as dark color engraving. This is almost like a silver tint. Whereas the 450 nanometer, which is the typical dial laser, gives you a bit more black and it gives you a rough surface finish. I'm hoping to get this kind of color with these kind of details, but at the moment I'm failed to do that with this laser. So I'm going to do the start to finish so from uh, from beginning of white tiles to spray it to en engraving it and actually to show you what you can and can't do with this laser. So I'm using just white tiles and these are actually what people throw away after the DIY. So they order too much for the bathroom. So I scout the uh, um, Facebook marketplace and see if anyone is giving this away or do it really cheap. For example, they might have an altar and they open it just to use two towels, but they're not going to use the rest, right? They probably keep a few for spare and then they probably just get rid of them cheap. And I sometimes do them a favor. If they give me something free, I do engraving for them. So, you know, this is how I minimize the, my budget of um, doing my hobbies or engraving. Yeah, so I'm in the UK and this tile here is 15 centimeters by 15 centimeters, which is quite typical. So six inch by six inch. With the Laser Packer 4, if you don't have the side extender, I think you can only do, let's like, say, 100 and 100 with the 450 nanometer. But I got a slider, so I can actually do slightly bigger. With the slider, I should be able to engrave this fully. With other slider, you are limited to a bit smaller engraving. You need titanium dioxide powder. I have two types here. Uh, this is food grade. Um, this is just the cheapest I can get on the internet. It comes in 500 gram. Um, the food gray one is slightly better in a way that they don't clump. I think this one here, they, they are grinded quite smoothly, 
but there are actually lumps in them. You just have to shake it more often or use something to stir it properly. Here I'm using isopropyl alcohol. Again, this is the cheapest I can find online. Doesn't really matter the brand as such, but make sure that it's uh, higher, high in the percentage, almost like pure alcohol. So there's, once you spray it on, it dries quickly. For me, I don't want to wait for 24 hours uh, for the spray can paint to dry and that is one of the reasons why I go with say you have to like wipe it with alcohol get rid of the oil residues and all that I I did I did a couple of tests um, clean not clean half clean doesn't really make any difference as long as it's not dirty um, you should be good to go so how are we going to spray them onto the towel so I have this kind of a spray gun right here um, this is made by uh, Katsu so basically it's a knockoff um, spray which use the Makita battery so I like a bit of cordless that's always helped me this one is a wide version of the same basically they just push out tons of air now the reason why I don't use a pump hand pump spray is because they always clog so I have gone through like you know five or six of this spray bottle and you can see the front um, I guess you just have to keep them clean after you spray them you're supposed to I guess rinse nozzle or take out the nozzle altogether whereas this one here you got different size nozzle then the one that I use it never clogs so I don't want to press it right now this one is battery it will pump out a lot of air but yeah that's the reason why I don't use a hand spray so and the second reason why I use this type of spray is that because when you fully press the trigger it will spray out a a jet of um, ethanol and powder and you spray them on and if you release the trigger a bit the motor still engage but there's no liquid come out because the pin is closing the nozzle so that jet of air helps you to dry out the ethanol on the actual towels especially on a very nice and warm day what you do is you spray and then if you find that the the towel is getting wet but it's not drying quick enough all you need to do is ease off on the trigger and the air will naturally dry up the ethanol in seconds and then you can do the next layer and then you do the next layer this sprayer is actually quite poorly made so it will spray the trigger here um, if you press enough for the motor to engage the pin is already open so I couldn't use it to dry the towels but all I did is extend the pin by about four or five uh, millimeters so now I can actually fully engage it to spray and then release it until the pin closed and the motor still engaged so I can use it to dry the towels um, I'm going to move the camera to where I usually spray and then I move the camera to the engraving area so you guys can see how it's actually done so basically it's just ethanol with powder in terms of how much of each doesn't really matter as well as long as they are thoroughly mixed so I would say maybe 1 in 10 maybe 20% um, over time it will settle so even when you are spraying you're supposed to keep shaking this so that there is enough powder suspended you should use a sieve for this but I don't have one at the moment so you can see they are not really that fine they actually clumps up a little bit half a jug like this will be enough for I don't know a batch of 100 tiles maybe you don't really need to use a lot okay so this is now ready to spray let's give you a nice new battery got tons of these batteries around some of you may be asking like okay so how, how do I know when the um, spray is done or how is the how much is the coating needed um, you can see that's two this is two towels here obviously they are slightly different sizes but this one here has no coating and you can see they reflect lights and this one here is sprayed completely and you can see that there is no light spot at all so what this means is when you're actually doing the spraying make sure there's enough light obviously here is the studio so it's the best place to inspect your towel if you move it around you shouldn't be able to see any reflection at all so this is a full matte surface so you can see if you tilt your tilt your thing to your eye level you shouldn't be able to see any reflective surface so that means that this towel is done and once the towel is powder coated don't touch it because if you touch it powder will come off and then that part will no longer be um, engravable um, the sky is horrible the weather is horrible it's probably the worst time to spray as well because it's so cold and humid but just to show you guys what I do I have four, four white towels there they haven't been sprayed yet got my spray gun here You 
see there is no spray coming out just air and this helps to dry it while you're spraying and because it's so overcast I can't really see the reflection anyway but if you go to the side of the towel and look across it you shouldn't be able to see any reflection which I don't see any at the moment I got my computer PC here connected to my uh, laser backup 4 Got the extended slider here so I can get the maximum out of the engraver print area or burn area. This is the laser packer uh, design software. At the moment it's on slider mode, that's why you got this long strip here. I'm going to just demonstrate what I do in terms of get my engraving onto the tile. I will open up the picture that I want to engrave. And from here you choose effect. Um, Laser Packer 4 is very good software, but very limited as well in terms of what settings that you can do. So I'm going to max out this. My tile is a square, so I need to go to edit and then do a cutout of a square. I'm not sure if there is an easier way to do it, but this is what I do. Slightly bigger than the square that I need. And then I do cut out. So let's say this is the engraving I want to put on the tile. I press OK and then it goes back here. Now to come to the setting, there isn't a preset, Norton White House is none, so it doesn't matter what you choose because you need to change it anyway. So I'm going to go with titanium or metal, change it to 450. So 1K resolution, 60 power, depth is 100. And then you go preview. Now you have to line up your tiles with the laser. So there is a blue laser guide to continue so it will scroll the tile. Just make sure the whole tile is covered. And final check, style extender mode, frequency, power 60, depth 100. So let's confirm. Alexa, turn on the extractor fan. So now the computer will transfer the file into the laser packer 4. And when the file is completely transferred, then the laser will start. Now this is the part where it gets a bit dangerous, so make sure you wear your safety goggles. I'm going to put on mine now. Now titanium dioxide is quite toxic if you inhale them. By touching it, you'll be fine. But if you get them in your lungs, I'm sure they do some nasty stuff. So make sure you have ventilation set up. I got an extractor fan here. But still, make sure you are covered and same goes when you are actually spraying them now laser engraving sometimes is not as sexy as what the manufacturer say it will be it does take some time at the moment it's on one percent and you can see one percent hasn't really moved now it's two percent so yeah we're going to come back to a finishing product Okay, now when I say it's a long process, I'm not joking. So here you can see the timer is on 29 minutes, so almost half an hour. And it just done over a half. So I guess this will take about an hour to do. Okay, so one hour is gone and my results tower is here. I'm not entirely happy because I kind of like shoot myself in the foot right here. I didn't line up the tiles properly, so it didn't engrave the edge. And the other thing is this stupid defect come out again there's a straight line over there so I'm not sure why so I'm not I'm going to do this again okay so now I'm going to show you another function so this time we are not engraving a photo like that as such so those are grayscale with dots so now I'm going to do a simple graphics okay and according to my previous test I need to set it to 1K, 450 uh, nanometer, one pass, but 90 power and 10 depth. And this time will be a much quicker engraving because it's not actually um, doing the whole picture, it's only doing the black area. So it doesn't scan side by side all the way to the edge, it only goes to engrave what you actually need to engraving. So this is a different function compared to 
the dot matrix type of uh, engraving. My simple engraving of a bean function, and this is now 96%, and it only took me 19 minutes, let's say 20 minutes for the full tile length. Obviously, the more graphics or more blacks you have on it, it will take longer. And at 10 centimeters, there's no white line. So I'm not sure what that white line is all about. So for viewers at home, if you understand what that white line is, please let me know. I did reach out to Laser Packer and see what they have to say about that. I think it's a software problem instead of hardware. So here is some close up before we clean off the powder. So this is straight off the laser engraver. If I wipe my finger there, you can see the powder is coming off quite easily. This one haven't been cleaned either. And um, I got the 10 centimeters fold line on repeatable image. So when it comes to cleaning the towels, there is no cleaning product required, just a sponge and just some running water. and just wipe it off so you got a um, kind of shaded engraving so this is like grayscale or what you call them I'm not sure what you call them in the laser packer design uh, space and this one is the bean so this one is just simple graphics now the simple graphics shows up the contrast a lot more it's almost like black is really really black black and whereas this one here rely on the dot so even the the blackest area is not completely black and I really like the texture of the towel so the towel is no longer smooth because the titanium dioxide is actually uh, fused to the top layer it's a shame that there is a fault with the 10 centimeters um, into engraving um, that laser packer needs to come back to me and explain why that happens um, it's not just this image so even if I choose a different image with a different kind of a uh, dimension it still happened at exactly the 10 centimeters so this is the faults that happen when I use the slider um, when I engrave the same kind of the dimension or size of the tiles like this one here, this is 15 by 15 centimeters, there's no lines. So again, is something like specifically for those type of engraving which comes out. So that's just my take of the Laser Packer 4 engraver for uh, Norton white tile method. I use my own um, spray. Um, the next video will be using just glue. My method really depends on your skill. It's like if you spray too thick on one side and too thick on the other and your laser is not set up correctly, then you might get some fuzzy photos here. But if you get the layer right, you can get some fantastic engraving for not a lot of money. Because buy them, buy them in bulk and buy the um, alcohol in bulk is really cheap. So next video will be titanium dioxide but paint on. I have seen a few tutorial on like three parts of water, one part of PVA. And that sounds really promising as well. And um, if I can get rid of not using that big spray because I do have the spray outside. So sometimes in, uh, in winter time I do want to work in the studio. So um, if I can get away with spray, get away with a... Um, ethanol or isopropyl alcohol even better so thank you very much for watching i can't wait to see you next time with more interesting gadget bye bye